Hey there, everyone. Happy afternoon this Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. Wednesday. I don't know what day it is. It's Wednesday afternoon here in Sedona. And uh, I'm coming to you after the day after my birthday when I had a beautiful gathering here last night. And all is well. So, what's today's theme? Hey, Felico. Hi. I saw your video the other day of your beautiful place there in Costa Rica. Hey, Chris. Welcome. I just am jumping on now. So I'm a little I'm a little sleepy, not because I partied wild last night. It was a very sober party at an early night, but uh, I just haven't been getting good sleep. So excuse me if I seem a little bit kind of slow on the uptake. I was sitting here in meditation beforehand and, oh, and then started to feel myself going, Nuh. so, okay. So our theme for today, I did pull a card today and, um, I thought about I thought about some other possibilities of how we might do this. I did a video yesterday, so sorry, many things are coming in my head at once. I did a video yesterday for my birthday, and for those those on the call and afterwards, I asked, uh, read a card, you know, or, uh, formulate a question in your head, and then I'll read the card for you. And I did it three times, and it's been the least popular of all of the. Of the videos I've made so far so I'm like eh, all right okay maybe that's maybe I made it maybe it was too long or so then I thought well I'll go back to what I was doing before and then we'll go from there and we'll see what happens but I'm thinking about other ways where you could actually ask your questions first in your mind silently and then I can read the card because the funny thing is this stuff works you get the information even if it's in a different time period hi Susan welcome Okay, so I'm just playing around with what, what would be a great format for doing these daily Facebook Lives. And so I really would love to hear from you if, you know, would you like the idea of knowing that there will be a card every day and that you can ask a question for insight? Like, you would ask it in advance. You'd go, okay, I'm, you know, tomorrow's question, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inquire about this new career possibility and see what card comes up. So Susan says more cards. Okay, great. So just let me know, like would that, you know, would you want me to do live readings? Would you like me to show you like the day before three cards that I've picked, but you're only seeing like the back, the back side of them. And then you pick a card, card number one, card number two, card number three, and then the next day I read and interpret them for you. That's a possibility. I've seen some people do that as well. Or do you prefer that I just do this where I kind of roll with the themes coming in, either as a download or via a card? So any and all feedback is much appreciated. And I really would appreciate any relevant comments for those of you who are watching now or later because it helps me understand how I can serve you in this capacity here. Okay, uh, so let's see. What's the next thing? The next thing is, I think it's time to to do the card, but I'm just, I want to just, what the heck is that I'm seeing? Oh, okay, I thought it was on my wall, but it's a picture on the screen, <laughs> sorry. All right, so today's card is, this will be interesting. Thanks, Felico, I'll look at your feedback in a bit here. So today's card is the Seven of Swords, and it's called Failure. I want to start with a quote, excuse me, I want to start with a quote from, I think it was the Buddha, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So that is a quote that really points to this whole idea of the law of attraction and our beliefs and how much our beliefs about our ability to achieve something, to get something, to do something, to be someone, uh, how they influence, you know, whether we could actually accomplish that is based somewhat on our beliefs, based a lot on our beliefs. And I would argue our subconscious beliefs much more than our conscious beliefs. So, that, I want to pair that quote with the idea of failing one's way to success. Failing one's way to success. 
So the way I see it, there are two kinds of failure. There's the failure of learning and growth. So when we do something and we fail, and then we go, okay, let's reconsider this. What, what did we do wrong? What, what needs to change? What needs to be improved? What can I learn from this situation? What is this showing me about myself? What do I need to heal, clear, solve in order to do better next time? That's one kind of failure. Fail, that's failure, failing your way to success. And um, we know that um, Thomas Edison failed at creating the light bulb something like 10,000 times or 9,999, so some, some extraordinary amount of times he attempted to create the light bulb and failed. And they were learning experiences for him until he actually accomplished the thing he wanted to accomplish. So one kind of failure is to recognize that failure is not a life sentence. It's an experience and we can mine it like a miner, you know, we mine it for the growth opportunities. And this can be in relationships, in career, in skill development, in communication, in pff, you name it, all kinds of things. The other kind of failure is the kind of failure that some of us grow up learning, which is the, that if you fail, it's very bad, and you're stuck as a failure. And therefore, it's safer just to not even start. So this is the mindset of people who don't actually change or grow. Failure is itself so risky that they don't even try. And so this is why at this time, I mean, this isn't the only reason why, right? But this is one of the reasons or one of the contributing factors to what we see happening in the world today, which is that there are some of us who are living these extraordinary lives. And there are some of us who are living lives of doing the same thing day after day, week after week, year after year, and nothing changes. And they dream about that trip to Hawaii or they dream of, oh, wow, it's amazing what Dawn does. She goes to Bali and she does this stuff or whatever your dream is, whatever their dream is. But they never change. They go to that same cubicle or that same whatever it is day after day after day without being willing to risk failure by attempting something new. So I get that risk needs to be mitigated, that we don't want to just totally jump off the deep end with a wild hair idea. But I also know that if we don't risk at all, that nothing will change. And so failure, for those of us who... who have been willing to take the risk, mitigated sometimes, sometimes wildly I've taken some risks that were not very well thought out. Uh, what we find is that if we are willing to grow with the lessons of failure, ultimately and eventually things can work out. So it does mean you have to have a fair amount of nerve fiber strength and fortitude to go, Oh boy, that was a big failure. Okay, I got to learn from that and sort of regroup and what's the next thing. So, so now I want to look here for a minute at the card itself because now I've given you some sort of the big picture overview concepts of failure and, and what failure means to me and sharing some insights about that which hopefully are helpful to you to think about. You know, am I a person who's not taking some risks in my life that, of my dreams that I really, really want to take because I'm afraid of failure? Am I a person who tries something once, it doesn't work, and therefore I say, it's a failure, I'm not going to do it again, or twice or three times and then give up? Or am I a person who's willing to do whatever it takes to create the dream that I really feel called to create? even if I fall on my face sometimes. So that's, that's one piece, so really considering that. Now let's look here and let's see what other insight we can glean from this card. So here we have this guy. He looks pretty dejected, doesn't he? He's got his sword is broken, his shield is broken, his helmet is off, and he's slumped over, pretty freaking de dejected. And he's clearly, he's failed at whatever this particular effort was. And if you look in the background, there's several things, but you see this huge wall 
that's like a like a parapets or like a a protective wall and it looks to me and knowing the meaning of this card and having seen many variants of it like he took his sword and he started slamming up against the rock wall with his sword wrong tool but instead of looking for a different strategy which is also part of seven of swords swords are mind and thought seven is where we're in a it's not yet time to take action. More strategy, swords, mind, thought, more strategy is needed. So it looks like he just ran headlong toward that big honking wall, and instead of walking through the doorway, or instead of going up over the hill and through this open gateway to what leads beyond, he just started slamming his sword up against that big rock. No strategy acted before it was time, and now, instead of evaluating what happened, what he did maybe wrong or what he could do better, he's just dejected because he's failed. And again, this is a sword card, so sword is about mind and thought. Seven is about things are not yet ready, they're not ripe yet for action or for manifestation. So he has a choice right now. He's sitting here of course, he might be exhausted, too. I mean, you would be, too, wouldn't you, if you had a sword and you kept slamming it up against a rock wall until it broke? That's pretty tiring. And yet we do that in our lives, don't we? Sometimes we, it's funny because we'll, like, have a situation and we'll want to solve it. Here's how this shows up for me in a, in a simple, fairly harmless way. Hardware technology. So the printer, let's say, my printer, for example. Sometimes it just doesn't work, and it's like, uh, pfft, what? Why isn't it printing? And sometimes I'll, you know, I'll press the button, I'll reset it, I'll press the button. It doesn't work still. Press the button again. It's like, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and still not getting the results. So, and then getting discouraged or angry or frustrated. So now he's got a choice right now. He might be just exhausted and needs to catch his breath. But then after that, he has a choice of being dejected, staying dejected and saying, I'm a failure, it won't work. And then if any other people come along to, to try and get in there, he'll be like, ah, oh, forget it. It doesn't work. I tried that. It's never going to work. You're wasting your time. And then become like a, a spreader of poop ideology to others, of discouragement to others. Or he could start to evaluate. He could go, hmm, you know, that was a rock wall. My sword's broken. My helmet's broken. What am I going to do now? I'm going to have to think this through. What did I do wrong? What can I learn from this? And what might I need? And, you know, as soon as you ask that question, think of all the possible things. He could choose to walk through the doorway. He could get his, his weapons fixed. He could go back and get help, uh, you know, get the support of others. He could decide that he doesn't need to go in there too much to begin with and go through the Stonehenge-like rocks over there. He could choose to decide that actually there's another way for him to get in the back door of this big rock wall place. I mean, there's just lots of possibilities once he lets go of this belief that he's failed and say, all right, well, failure is a lesson. It's an opportunity to learn. So let me, let me look at that. Let me figure out. Well, this didn't work. What you know? What might I be able to do now to to improve this or to have more success next time? So those are just some possibilities. So I'm curious from those of you listening. I see a couple of comments in there, and I truly appreciate your comments. And I really do request that you share with me your feedback. How do you feel about failure in your life? Are you afraid to fail? Is failure one of those things that will send you running in the other direction or the, the potential for failure so that you're not even going to, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to try that. That's, if I fail, I'm going to lose face. People are going to make fun of me. I'm going to lose money or whatever it is. Or do you weigh the risks and strategically, remember Seven of Swords is also about mental strategy, Strategically consider how you can go about getting what you want, doing what you want, being who you want to be, recognizing that failure might be something that has to happen along the way to success. Hey, Annette, hi. So consider that. I invite you to ask yourself, 
what, what does failure mean to me? Am I willing to take risks for what I really want? To risk failure? To risk looking like a fool sometimes? In order to create the, the legacy, the lifestyle, the experience, the whatever it is, the, the book you want to write, whatever. Am I willing to risk looking like a fool for the opportunity to actually expand myself? Or, mwah, I met, uh, or is failure one of those things where you go, you know what, I am not willing to take a risk. I would rather stay safe in the devil I know, even if I'm not happy here. Now, I suspect knowing, you know, who I attract, that those of you who are watching this are of the former persuasion. However, because I did pull the card, I do want to invite you to poke around in some of those less comfortable places in your life. Where are those secret sweet dreams that you've been holding that you just haven't breathed any life into because you know that it's going to take some risk, some effort, some strategy to make it happen? And again, I'll just illustrate with an experience in my life and then I'm going to start to wrap this up. So for years, I wanted to travel to Southeast Asia for years. And I always used the excuse that I didn't have any money. And the truth is I was a pretty low-income single mom for a long time. That's true. However, <laughs> there was a more secret, secret narrative going on, which was that I was afraid that people would think I was crazy if I went to do it alone. And the partner in my life also, once I did have a partner, he didn't want to go. And so I thought I had to go with him and that it would be too big of a risk for me to go by myself, conflict in the relationship or whatever, or spending the money. So for years, I did not risk failure, failure in the relationship, failure with my finances, failure with um, enjoyment of the experience to actually save up some money, squirrel away some money, and go to Southeast Asia. But I finally did. I did do it. And uh, you, uh, those of you who know me, you know that over time, and it did take time, over time through a series of successes and failures, I eventually did create an extraordinary life that began in Southeast Asia. So I lived, you know, I lived a beautiful lifestyle there and moved on to do other things, came back to America, etc. And I'm not, there's nothing unique about me. My, I mean, my, the details of my story are unique, but I'm not like so special that I get to do it and you don't. The only thing that's different is that I took the risk of the willingness to fail. And, but I thought strategically about it first. I had to save some money. I had to do some things. There are details related to my specific circumstance, right? But I could not continue to live in such a small box of what dawn was. And to that end, Cassie, thank you for sharing, it was sucking the life force out of me to be who I was not and to squash my dreams. And so I had to find the way to take the risk of failure and I did it strategically and it took me time to prepare and all of that stuff. And I went through ups and downs and all of that stuff. So those details aren't as important as the, again, the question related to the card, which is, are you willing to take the risk of failure and use each failure as an opportunity to learn and grow? Or are you so afraid of failure that you're willing to stay stuck exactly where you are rather than risk something else. And there's no judgment, really. That's the other thing I want to say. There's no judgment. You are on your own unique path, and you know better than anyone else what you need. And see you later, Felico. Um, you know better than anyone else what you need. My invitation to you is to look deeply and honestly at yourself. Where in your life are you hiding from your true dreams because you're afraid of failure? And what can you do strategically first to begin to plan a move in the direction of your dreams? And that doesn't mean you have to quit your day job and go running off to the other side of the planet like uh, <clears throat> some of us did. 
well, I did plan strategically too. It could be that your dream is to be an artist and you're busy crunching numbers in an office as an assistant. So take an art class, feed the dream. You don't have to take a big risk, but if you never do anything about it, it's amazing how fast life goes by. It's amazing how fast. And I feel like I'm old enough to say that now. So, um, yeah. So, okay, so failure. Consider, consider what failure has been to you, what it means to you, whether you've taken failure as an opportunity to grow and to expand yourself and to develop your skills, or if you use failure as an excuse to hide behind silently, even if you don't say it out loud, in order to not go for your dreams. And notice how it feels when you get real honest with yourself about that. Okay, my dears, until tomorrow, I'm wishing you all each bright blessings and much love as you contemplate the concept of failure as a potential tool for your own growth. Ah, much love.